I just want to say, I mean, going through the dark night of the soul means we have to face aspects of ourself we might not like, but when we are unconscious to those aspects of ourself, we might not like we engage maybe in addictive tendencies in order to avoid going through that dark night of the soul. And some people can find addiction to things like drugs or alcohol or cigarettes when uh, TV, uh, news, um, shopping. Uh, I mean, the, the list is real long as far as distractions are concerned. Um, some people are very desperate for medicine, though, because of the trauma. There's a lot of trauma going on. And I think if you are engaging in something that makes you feel better, but are willing to look at it and move through it uh, and understand it, then it, it, it might serve you temporarily. And don't shame yourself because of it. But just don't go so unconscious with it as a vice to the point where you're going to negate your ability to listen to your intuition and what the pain or trauma is trying to tell you or what it's um, maybe going to teach you to protect yourself from in the future. Mm -hmm. That kind of uh, grief and, and, and having to make those kind of decisions and, and find sort of peace. I mean, there's so much programming I feel that like gets in the way instead of being able to engage with our creative energies to the point where we can reconcile it through feeling it to heal it. We need to not be afraid of feeling things. You know, pharmaceuticals are the worst option because it takes away our ability to feel so that we can heal. So even if a traumatic experience like that happens, just feel into it. L listen to what your soul has to say because it's gonna hold you and hold your heart and help you to breathe through it and move through it and help make sense out of it, not through the lens of any kind of 3D projection or medical industry or anything. This is where sovereignty lies and your spiritual truth and power. Only you can make peace with it. And it's a beautiful peace yeah. because you and that soul have its own divine connection that nobody else should define. You know, there's an ebb and flow. I feel that our vibration is gonna rise it's going to fall, but as long as we can meet both polarities with compassion, understanding, forgiveness, and acceptance, we can bridge those polarities and be the alchemists and create the transformation. And, you know, obviously Charnel like talks about that and everybody else here does. Um, but I just wanted to add that just to kind of clarify that we're making these kind of points. Um, even if something falls in vibration. I mean, what is the dark night of the soul? It's anything but comfortable. We can't always be vibrating at this like, oh, super high, like, oh, I'm feeling awesome and uh, highly intellectual and filled with wisdom. No, sometimes we have to just fall to our knees and just cry and it's okay. You are the earth. So are you 5D? You got to ask yourself. 5D has to do with your fifth chakra has to do with the fifth element, which is ether. So in any moment you wonder about 5D, ask yourself, are you generating that energy into the collective? Are you vibrating with that potential and that resource, which is everywhere around us at all times? We're way beyond 5D, we're 12 strand DNA and beyond. Our physical vessel might not be able to fully embody it at this point, but our consciousness can. And if we're consistent with it, it can step down into the physical plane and begin to upgrade the physical where we begin to move from carbon base to crystalline. So 5D, think about your fifth chakra. Are you speaking a truth frequency or are you, or are you spreading mind viruses? Speaking a truth frequency means you're being authentic. You're dropping the facades and you're just being real. And that to me is the entry into 5D. And the ether element starts to purify our chakras and the nucleic acids of our DNA when we can be real. And we're going through a huge dark night of the soul as a collective. And we're dealing with Chiron the wounded healer, which is ruling the 13th sign of Phaeacus, which is connected to the element ether. When that started to come into the picture, it really required all of us to be honest with our wounds and traumas. Because if we're not, we just end up acting out, blaming others, and it's the blame, shame, victim game, and it doesn't get us anywhere. So we got to learn to rehabilitate as a humanity and hold hands and, and offer support. You know, we're going to have our good days and our not good days, but, but you know, there's nothing better than that friend that you can call and, and, and 
you know, and be there for them in return. You know, it's, it, we, we don't have to put on any facades. How about let's let truth win. And truth is sometimes it's not a comfortable thing, what we're tackling. And um, I, I, I just feel the rehabilitation factor and, and being true to who we are and where we're at and offering that support to others is entering 5D and speaking those words of love and compassion and understanding and, and honesty and self-honesty is entry into 5D. And the ether element is going to clean us up if we can just be willing to face those wounds and traumas and be compassionate with other people's wounds and traumas so that all that acting out and facade game can crumble because that is the cabal uh, and the old paradigm. That is what we've been existing under for so long. Fake news, Hollywood, entertainment industry, and all these things uh, even new age deceptions that are like, this is how it should look and this is how you should be. And this is what it means to be professional or this uh, or successful. You know, how about we embrace the fact that it's freaking messy and it's okay. And, and we're going to be devastated. We're going to cry. But once we release that, the light shines. I mean, let's learn from nature. It's got monsoon seasons. It's got rain. It has snow. It has five volcanoes. I mean, if we if we can't feel into all these elementals, you know, what the heck are we doing? We're just polarizing ourselves or limiting ourselves to particular archetypes or elements. The whole reason we're born with a unique zodiac map is to bring us back to the zero point unified field. And so we're not meant to process it the same way. So to try and create sameness is ridiculous when diversity and harmony is true oneness. Our differences are a blessing. So let's learn and grow from each other and share the codes, share the vibes. I just want to add that, I mean, I feel pain and adversity are the messengers that are helping us to unlock those keys. They are nudging us to uncover our greatness and reclaim our true treasures. And the cabal or the deep state tactics taking advantage of our amnesia have taken advantage of these initiations and weaken us to giving our power to them in the face of these incredible opportunities to advance ourselves. They're like, hmm, let's figure out a way to cause insecurity, lack of self-worth, um, and perpetuate, uh, this like demon seed that has uh, infected pretty much every power structure that our children are raised in. And mm -hmm. we are greater than that. And we are the guardians that will take this down and protect future generations and the innocence of our children. Well, what's interesting that. about like AI and false light, I mean, if it's artificial, it's really feeding on a subpersonality that's been indoctrinated into becoming something that it's not. So we enable and reinforce these artificial timelines because we ourselves are not being authentic or genuine. We are adopting behavior patterns, whether they're from our ancestors or from the television or from the indoctrination in our school systems, where we're literally, you know, feeding that. And I know everybody is addressing this in this weekend conference and a lot of people talked about this today it's just really wild i just wanted to you know shed light on that that uh false light is i feel the negation of accepting the dark because the true nature of us is masculine and feminine light and dark if we can't integrate these polarities where are we the true darkness is the soil and the soul and it, it accepts the seeds of our higher consciousness to birth new realities that are in accordance with whatever divine plan. The divine plan is to have a creative imagination to be artistic. There's not like a set plan, you know, under the domain of the, you know, Saturn, but the law of structure that is under Saturn's domain is asking us to take these structures and fill it with the essence of our multidimensional truth and our spirit essence and our capacity to have enough of a creative imagination to do something with these structures and forms um that uh harvest beautiful gardens and um the visions and dreams and goals that uh can make this world a better place and we have that in us well, i'd love to say real quick uh sometimes we don't remember our life right we walk around 
Some people call it a senior moment. They might think they're starting to get Alzheimer's. They're like, I don't know where I left my keys. I don't know what I did. Did I go to the grocery store yesterday? Did I really, did that really happen? I mean, we're constantly dreaming. We're multidimensional beings and there are places that we shut off for a reason and we enter other arenas. Just because we forget something doesn't mean that we're not existing somewhere else. I remember people telling me I have ADD. And when I just felt into the whole attentions on different dimensions, it was no longer a learning disability. It was like, I'm just journeying, I'm going somewhere else. Sorry, I can't just sit here and be controlled by whatever they're trying to shove into my brain in this math class or history class. I'm, I'm off somewhere else, but oh, let's call it ADD. Yeah, yeah. And, and whatever we can't remember, let's, let's give ourselves a little more credit. Maybe we're somewhere else. Maybe a goal would be that we remember everything, but um, that might be a little bit too much for the physical consciousness body uh, relationship to be able to manage right now. Um, but let's not project that it's a uh, affliction or an issue or a problem. Just begin to engage in it because when we can start to drop the whole diagnoses or here's your affliction and all the labels, and we can actually engage in the things that we might be working on bringing strength towards, then we can encourage it to make a transformation instead of um, condemn ourselves to uh, carrying a label uh, that um, makes us feel less than when it's really um, just and you know a, a greater goal we can work on. But yeah, just know that you're probably somewhere else. I don't know. Mm -hmm. my, well, I, I, I can jump in. I mean, I, I feel everything is a substance, you know, everything, right? So why not choose wisely? And if you choose something that might not feel wise, teach it wisdom. I mean, we are not at the mercy of the substances we take into ourselves and the things that we breathe in. I mean, we're all breathing in chemtrails for God's sake, right? So, so what do we give it in return? We give it compassion, love, forgiveness, transmutation, and alchemy. Um, I feel plant medicines uh, help us to open doorways into these greater potentials in our consciousness. But, you know, it's not for everyone. So we don't have time to go after one another with, oh, this is what you think of Christ, and this is what you eat, and this is what you consume. No, we're dealing with Satanists and pedophiles. The last thing we should do is go after each other for anything. Sorry, I, I need to calm down. No, do it. Go off. No, uh, we no, love it. Like, Everybody you know, loves I, it. It boggles my freaking mind. <laughs> turn, the, turn your camera on. I want to see you. <laughs> yes. Hi, guys. <laughs> but anyway, you guys take over. That's awesome. <laughs> Gosh, well, it, it's quite a question and I'm not going to spend too long on it. Uh, I raised twins, <laughs> had them at 25. Uh, now they're 23 and they are like my best friends and they live near me. Well, like <laughs> in our backyard, building <laughs> houses and taking care of chickens and goats and uh, and, and working out issues you know even issues that are ancestral uh and 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 it wasn't always so easy there was a lot of uh just having to purge and like you know when we are a child and you're acting out or throwing a tantrum or just like not knowing what to do with the emotion um as a guardian or a parent you need to just love no matter what love no matter what and uh yeah, I, I, I think the greatest thing I've ever done is to help my boys move through some of the most hardcore passages in their life. Uh, and I know that they see me for that, even though they know I'm not perfect. No, I, I, I couldn't be the perfect mom, but I did the best that I could. And I will, I, I would take a bullet for them and die for them. <laughs> and they, is that what's required? Not necessarily. Everybody's got their own calling and their own way of going about it. But authenticity and love and also uh knowing that we're not always right and we're certainly not wrong but how can we create a better dialogue that uh you know is is is, is music um that that uh creates something that can help transform ancestral patterns and societal programs in order to build the new earth and create it through our own frequency and capacity to do this amongst 
our most significant relationships, which is with our children, our parents, our partners, our friends, you know, and if a person doesn't have kids, it doesn't make them any less of a mother or father. Some are called to play a major mother father role just for humanity. So um, I just had to add that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, my final words is just the appreciation of everybody that shared today. And I mean, we're just powerful. We are artists and musicians of our reality. Uh, are we playing with an instrument that isn't tuned up or uh, are we painting under somebody else's uh, influence. Uh, and if somebody spills on our canvas that we are consciously painting, does it become a failure? No, we turn it into something beautiful. We are fluid beings. We can influence our reality in every moment mm -hmm. on levels that uh, I feel the great awakening is gonna remind us of. I mean, to me, that is the great awakening. Sovereignty is recognizing our access to the creative imagination and how we can paint reality with the human vessel as a paintbrush in order to generate uh, a physical experience that um, is going to help to repair a lot of damage and a lot of trauma um, that we're witnessing. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. they got another thing coming. And the fact that they're amping it up right now, it's like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember getting out of the Mars recruitment and stuff like that and all these different things. I was like, you know, you're creating a monster, not a, not a scary monster, but the more somebody tries to take away your authenticity and truth, if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if you really are aware of what that authenticity and truth is, they can't have it. When you're spiritually connected with yourself and you have experienced what your divine center is all about, nobody can take that away. And in fact, the more they try, the stronger and more illuminated those energies uh, become. We are not victims. Um, we are spiritual warriors. And uh, the more they try, man, <laughs> the less chances they have. And they really did never have a chance. So. I'll leave it at that. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. My talk is, I believe it's at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Oh, it is. Uh, just, your your talk's at 2 o'clock Pacific time. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I just leave it at that. And thank you so much, you guys. Love you. Mm -hmm.